looking at 7.20 p.m. present our fall of council, uh, including Council President Jones, committee members Brossard, Williamson, and Limpert, the mayor, law director, and guests. We're here to discuss a liquor permit. Uh, this would be a new one. Uh, liquor permit number 0320703040. Uh, which would be issued to Bob Evans Restaurants, LLC, DBA Bob Evans Restaurant number 120, located at 25853 Lorraine Road, North Olmsted, Ohio, 44070. Uh, I have to admit this is uh, uh, an unusual one, seeing this from Bob Evans, but nonetheless, no objection from the police department. Uh, any questions or comments from committee? Questions or comments from council? Okay, seeing none, uh, I'll move to not object to all of council. Uh, liquor permit number 03207030440 and ask for a second. Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Williamson. All in favor say aye. 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 That'll pass three to zero. And uh, the meeting will conclude at 721 p.m. Thank you. Uh, good evening. I'd like to call the Environmental Control Committee meeting to order at 7.25 uh, p.m. 
uh, present are committee members uh, Heman, Glassburn, and Williamson, uh, Council Members Broussard, Kelly, Limpert, Schumann, Council President Jones, the Mayor, the Law Director, the Finance Director, the HR Director, and the Planning Director. We're here this evening to uh, quickly go over uh, resolution 2021-47, resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into agreements with the City of Cleveland Division of Water to establish a municipal utilities district, to restate the water services agreement, and to provide for the transfer of water utility assets from the City of North Olmstead. Um, and Mayor, I called the, the meeting just you know to make sure that we had an update with regard to uh, whether or not you've been in contact with Cleveland Water and whether or not they've given you a schedule of dates that they would be available? Um, I have not made contact. I've called, but uh, uh, as soon as I hear from them and get dates, I will uh, give that to Chuck. Hopefully it'll be... Okay, thank you. I, I'd appreciate that. Um, and so there being no really anything to discuss except just the update looking to schedule the next committee, committee meeting uh, for Cleveland Water to attend, I would like to make a motion. Well, there is no motion. I don't have to make a move. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Limpert. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I just had a question. I know the law director had some outstanding questions, and I just wasn't sure how he, I know he'd sent out those in email. Sure. Le yeah. How Would you like him to report on that? I don't know if we're going to cover it now. I was just asking how those are going to be addressed. That's all. We can if you'd like. If the law director would like to report on the, um, the email, I think, that you sent about the... Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Sure. There was just a, a couple of quick questions. I believe that, that you were the beneficiaries of the response. Uh, one question was about the authority of eminent domain uh, on, behind the part of the Cleveland Division of Water uh, it, it, uh, and through the city of Cleveland, of course, uh, constitutionally does, uh, does, does have the authority of eminent domain um, to, to uh, specifically because it's a utility and there's a separate section that, that cities enjoy that operate a utility uh, that have authority to exercise eminent domain. However, a prior public, pur prior public purpose doctrine would prohibit uh, or at least interfere substantially, if not completely prohibit, the ability of the uh, utility to take property that is already committed to a public purpose, such that it would interfere with that purpose or destroy it. Uh, so that was kind of where we came to. They, they, of course, have the power to take property for the purpose of furthering the utility function. Uh, they do not have the authority to take property from another community uh, that is already being used for a public purpose. That was the, the first question. And uh, Law Director, may, may I ask a, a follow-up sure. on that? Thank you. Um, so they could not use it for a different purpose, but they could, in fact, take it as theirs and run it? Or I don't believe that would be the case. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Thanks. Sorry. And uh, the second question was concerning gray water, uh, a gray water program. It seems to be flourishing in, uh, it's recognized in the state of Ohio. It's the water that is capable of being, that's been utilized, delivered and utilized, but could be repurposed. Typically, uh, you know, uh, it might be from a sink or something like that. Uh, and uh, the state of Ohio recognizes it. It permits it under the uh, regulations. Um, there's nothing stopping anybody that wished to apply for a permit to use a gray water system within their own home, uh, presumably meeting with all the building codes and plumbing codes and all that good stuff. Um, they're certainly capable of doing it. There really isn't anything that speaks to the issue of a, of a municipally owned gray water system. I think it would be, it would be um, unworkable probably here, <laughs> I think, because you'd have to collect it from everyone's home and then transport it and then ship it back and it may not I don't I don't that anyone's envisioned that here I think in the desert they might be thinking about that these days but as the reservoirs drop but uh, here you're individually allowed to do it it's certainly something that you can do you could check with the state of Ohio if you wanted to do a gray water system to try to conserve water you're certainly welcome to do so and um, and perhaps if you uh, uh, are able to find some success there to uh, from the state and they can help you do it go for it you're allowed to do it nothing to stop you thank you mr. Limpert uh, did that yeah thank you I just saw the email and wasn't sure how we're going to address or note those, so thank you. Okay, if there's nothing further to discuss, I'd like to uh, make a motion that we continue to hold 2021-47 uh, in committee pending the mayor's contact uh, you know, with Cleveland Water and ask for a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, and I conclude the meeting at 7.30 p.m. Thank you. You want to just leave it running? We good? This is the Finance Committee meeting. I'm going to take this off. This is the Finance Committee meeting of Council, 8-17-21. Uh, uh, We're uh, going to be discussing 2021-46, which is 
the resolution authorizing the Director of Human Resources to solicit proposals for excess insurance coverage for the city health care and hospitalization plans for 2022 and further authorizing the mayor subject to the approval of the Board of Control to enter into a contract for said insurance coverage. Um, Director Gallon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So this is legislation that allows us to solicit proposals for the city's health care plan and authorizes the mayor to enter into approval and the board of, through the Board of Control. So in 2022, um, this is the year that the traditional preferred provider plan is eliminated. So next year we will have the high deductible plan and our HMO plan through um, through, uh, I'm sorry, the, the hospital just took over Southwest. Um, it'll come to me. You, um, what did you say, Mr. Chairman? I didn't say anything. Oh, I can't see anyone speaking because of the mask. Metro no. Or university? U university. U the, UH. University UH, UH yes. Thank you. Yeah. So we did have our HMO plan used to be um, Metro, and we are switching to university. Um, we feel this offers a better network for our employees. So um, we will have two health care plan options next year. The IRS has increased annual contribution limits for health savings account plans. Family has gone up from 7,200 to 7,300. Single is up from 3,600 to 3,650. And catch-up contributions for those aged 55 or older remain the same at $1,000. Um, the city is going to still contribute half of the deductible for our employees for next year and the year after in 2023. And the annual deductibles will stay the same unless the IRS decides to make any changes mid-year. Uh, would you be able to send me that? Uh, I couldn't write that down fast. <laughs> yes, I will email it to you. Um, or do you need it for this evening? Uh, no. That's or for fine. next, okay. I'll make um, sure I email it we, to you. Um, are you asking for a suspension on this? No. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't do this ahead of time. All of councils here, committee is uh, Schumann, Broussard, and Kelly. Uh, certainly the mayor, law director, finance director, the planning uh, and the development director is here, HR director, and the uh, uh, finance uh, director. Um, okay. Any questions from... Uh, committee nobody okay all right um, all right so at, at this time I'll go ahead any questions from anybody else we all good um, at this time I'll go ahead and make a recommendation that we make a, a motion that we recommend uh, 2021 46 and ask for a second second all in favor aye aye three zero thank you and Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Meeting at uh, I don't know what time is it. Uh, Seven thirty-three. That was quick.
We'd like to call the caucus meeting of August 17th, 2021 to order at 7.45 p.m. Present are all members of council, the law director, planning and development director, human resources director, our finance director, and our clerk of council, and our guests this evening. Uh, council members, are there any additions or corrections to the caucus meeting minutes of July 1st and August 3rd of this year? Seeing none, those will stand as written. There are two pieces of legislation to be considered on first reading this evening for suspension of the rules. The first is Ordinance 2021-52 authorizing the director of planning and community development to make applications to Cuyahoga County in the state of Ohio for the Ohio water and wastewater infrastructure grant program and director Lieber thank you madam president um, a new funding opportunity for our south interceptor EQ tank project um, has come to light recently when the state of Ohio announced the, their water and wastewater infrastructure grant program using, I believe it's the ARPA funds that are flowing down through the state and they're making 250 million available statewide for various infrastructure projects. Included amongst those are wastewater treatment plant improvements, sewer lines and projects that uh, resolve and remediate inflow and infiltration issues in the community. So our ongoing uh, EQ tank project fits nicely into uh, that bucket. So the applications are being received on a first come first serve basis. We can apply for up to $5 million uh, for a capital project and $250,000 in the engineering. Um, there's no specific match requirement, but matching is recommended. Our uh, engineering consultant has recommended that we uh, put up at least half uh, in city funds and not request more than half in grant funds. Um, we do have some readiness to proceed. Maybe not; it's not fully engineered, but we know within the next calendar year we can be out to bid and can have bids back and can be starting this project in the second half of 2022. So we think the timing would work out well for us. Um, and we can also look back to costs incurred starting uh, March 3rd. So our engineering uh, for this phase has begun recently, so we can um, kind of look back in this per time period since March 3rd for costs that the city would have incurred. So we do need to apply through the state of Ohio, but there's an opportunity also um, that if we submit our project tomorrow to Cuyahoga County, the county will evaluate our project for prioritization. If you are on the county's top 10 list, you receive additional um, consideration in the scoring process with the state. So our interest and getting this quickly approved by council is to make sure we would meet that deadline of tomorrow to get our project considered by Cuyahoga County before it would uh, be submitted to the state of Ohio. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer. Councilman Schumann. Um, thank you. Um, uh, Director Lieber, will, will this include any stormwater retention? Uh, any of the stormwater retention project? This is solely for the South the Interceptor EQ basin. EQ basin. Okay, thank you. Any further questions from council? Any objection to suspension? Okay, seeing none, thank you. The next piece of legislation to be considered for suspension of the rules is ordinance 2021-54, authorizing the director of planning and community development to submit a nomination application for water pollution control loan funds through the Ohio EPA's Division of Environmental and Financial Assistance and Director Lieber. Uh, thank you, Madam President. There's so much alphabet soup in this ordinance, <laughs> but what it comes down to, DEFA is the funding arm of the Ohio EPA, and they make available uh, low interest loans to communities that are undertaking uh, this type of capital improvement project. So uh, again, wastewater treatment plants, uh, sanitary sewers, and resolution of INI issues are all eligible under the program. Um, so the city would apply, this is a, actually a nomination at this point, 
I do believe there might be additional legislative action required of council at the point if our project is selected once we determine exactly what amount of money is required for the project. Again, if we're successful with the grant application, we will need to borrow less. And uh, if we're not successful with the grant application, uh, you know, we'd, we'd borrow more. But I believe a 20-year loan uh, currently for DEFA is 0.46%, uh, which is, I believe, less than half of what our borrowing capacity or our borrowing rate would be uh, traditionally. She can, the finance director can correct me if I'm wrong on that one. But it would help us save money um, to bundle, you know, this type of financing um, with any other grant or any other funding opportunity we can get to reduce the cost uh, to the city. And also, in the long run, to help keep our, our sewer rates low and um, prevent the need to raise rates over um, the near-term time horizon, so. Thank you. Councilman Schumann and then Councilwoman Heeman. Um, Director Lieber, I, I just wanna thank you for working on this. It's really impressive that we're already underway with these projects and then you're able to find this this potential grant opportunities. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and Director Lieber, that deadline is September 3rd? That's correct. Okay. Um, and for uh, the finance director, um, our current borrowing rate? Well, it, um, the last bond issue, the all-in interest cost was 1.13%. Okay. Um, and yeah, um, so 0.46 is less than that, and there's not as much like squires involvement and all those other things. Sure. So, thank you. The cost. Thank is you, less. Madam Chair. When she, Madam President. Yes. Next sorry. topic when she's finished. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions from Council? Any objection to suspension? Seeing none. Um, go, Director Guerrero. Um, thank you. Madam President, is there, is there any interest of council to give consideration to a third piece? That's the 2021-50 interim director legislation. I know this has been around for the past couple, two, three weeks um, for, for council to kind of kick around and look at. I think it was, was circulated for, for thought. Um, is, it, is it the will of council to proceed with a committee meeting next week to discuss this in more detail, or is this something we might be able to position to be able to move with? Council members, anyone feel strongly about moving this piece of legislation into committee? Yeah. Councilwoman Williamson. Yes. You, want, you would like it in committee? I would. Okay. All right. Director, we're going to move that into committee. Thank you. Thank you. So moving into committee assignments uh, on first reading, Ordinance 2021-49 and Ordinance 2021-50 will go into finance. Ordinance 2021-51 will go into public safety, and Ordinance 2021-53 will go into streets and transportation. And looking to schedule our committee meetings for next Tuesday, August 24th. Councilman Schumann. We can uh, go ahead and schedule the Finance Committee meeting for 7 o'clock on Tuesday. 24th and uh, director how long do you feel these would take director Did you say uh, it's just 49 um, and 51 49 and 50 I think the um, the transfer ordinance would be five minutes mr. chair you're talking about 50 is that the one you're referring to um, yes that's when I've been assigned. Correct? The interim, interim director appointment? Yes. Um, I, I mean, it's the will of council. I mean, yeah. so however long you want, I think it's, it's kind of laid out in the whereas clauses the, the, where we're at, and it's kind of set forward. So. You think we're needing a half an hour for it or something? Yeah, I, I suppose that's fine. And you only need a few minutes, you said, Carrie? Yes. Okay. We'll just schedule a half an hour, and we'll say to 7.30. Thank you. Councilman Broussard. Uh, thank you, Madam President. We will call a Public Safety, Health, and Welfare Committee meeting um, on that same day to discuss Ordinance 2021-51. I think I'm going to jump the line, though, and uh, schedule this for 645. And um, we should be done in time for finance at 7. Thank you. Councilman Limper. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Just, just for clarification, is the intent of this ordinance, because I have something similar in my committee right now in 2020-111, is the intent for this to, to replace that or because um, it has 
a component of it that's the same. Does anybody have any insights in that? Those that sponsor. I can't them? hear you. He's asking. Yeah. I was asking. Uh, so I have something similar already in committee 2020-111, and I'm just trying to understand whether this would potentially replace that. Um, and, and should we have that on the agenda to, to remove that, or are these different pieces of proposal? Because um, both both have a piece with that it's intended to replace. So okay, yeah. Thank you. Um, so I'll have a uh, meeting at twenty twenty one dash fifty three at seven thirty on that night. Thank you. Thank you. I would ask that the planning director be present. Thank you. And council members, just a reminder that um, tonight at the end of the meeting, there will be uh, a motion asked for regarding redistricting. Uh, so that will be at the end, end of this meeting. We had our committee of the whole meeting regarding that uh, a couple weeks ago. So just a reminder, that's on our agenda. And then also a reminder to council that uh, the committee meeting schedule for next week is going to be released this evening after tonight's meeting. So if there does need to be any additional meetings or changes to meeting times, please email our clerk and then we will, if, if need be, if we need to amend that committee meeting time, that will come out then on Monday. So I just wanted to remind council um, of the need to, to do that, to handle that that way this week. And council members, is there anything else for this evening? Seeing nothing else, we will conclude our caucus at 7.57 p.m. and we'll begin our regular meeting at 8 p.m. The council meeting of August 17, 2021 will now please come to order. The audience is invited to join council in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America 
and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mrs. Jones? Here. Mr. Brassard? Present. Mr. Glassburn? Here. Ms. Seaman? Here. Mr. Kelly? Here. Mr. Limpert? Present. Mr. Schumann? Here. Ms. Williamson? Here. If there are no additions or corrections, the special council meeting minutes of July 1st and the council meeting minutes of August 3rd, 2021 are approved as written. The following legislation will be considered for suspension of the rules this evening. On first reading, ordinances 2021-52 and 2021-54. Mayor Kennedy, do you have a report this evening? Uh, Madam President, I do a short report. Um, the Elm Road Rehabilitation Project was recently awarded to Specialized Construction. Work is ex expected to begin mid-September and the project should be completed within 60 days. Uh, the City of North Olmsted is again partnering with uh, CSU Small Business Development Center and the North Olmsted Chamber of Commerce to offer a free webinar to our local businesses. That webinar is navigating HR issues in, in the COVID era. The webinar will be held Wednesday, September 1st at noon. More information about the topic and the registration link are on the City's website. And Dominion will begin gas line replacement on Mastic Road in North Olmsted beginning Monday, August 23rd. The road will be closed uh, for this work, though access to local residents will be maintained. The project will conclude by the end of September with road repairs to follow. And Madam President, that concludes my report. Thank you. Law Director Garreau, do you have a report this evening? Uh, thank you, Madam President. I do I have a brief report. Uh, First, for those of you who are following, uh, the uh, Amanda Ramos Martinez case uh, has been set for a pretrial. That's the, the dog bite case, as it's known. has been set for a pretrial in Rocky River on the 26th of August at uh, 8.15 in the morning. Um, if anybody, I know there's some interest in the community to follow that, but that's the next scheduled hearing date uh, for uh, that case. Uh, last meeting, I had advised you that, uh, that the Kelly Patrick public records lawsuit was put to rest. It was concluded. Since that time, Ms. Patrick has filed a motion to vacate judgment uh, and is asking the court to set aside the judgment. This is not an appeal. It's an attempt to uh, actually uh, remove the judgment and reinstate the case. We have filed a, um, a response to that asking that that motion be denied. And I wanted to point out there's uh, something that's been going on. Um, we've been working with uh, the the um, housing, uh, excuse me, the the in terms of our housing enforcement and code enforcement, we've been working with the billing department. Uh, there's at least right now three potential candidates for uh, possible demolition based upon the fact the homes were abandoned uh, and they have, uh, they're have they continuing to deteriorate at such a pace and in such a fashion uh, that they create a hazard to the community. So we're, we're going to be obtaining warrants to go into those homes, administrative warrants, to see uh, if the outside, the fact that the roofs might be compromised and things of that nature, um, make those homes uh, that are abandoned uh, and often oftentimes the owners leave the, the city or even the state in one instance they left the country um, that they may be candidates to have to be demolished so um, we continue to work with the billing department on things like that uh, it's important I think for the community uh, these homes can really have a real serious blighting influence on the uh, the neighbors that are living there and so we're going to continue to work on that. If you do see any any significant maintenance issues or maintenance issues, it's always a good thing to turn them in um, to to make sure that if they're legitimate, they can be addressed so that the, the neighbors the neighborhood maintains its character and quality. Um, finally, uh, to Sean Stacy in the uh, service department, I want y'all to know that uh, there are now some clips holding this wall in place. Uh, several meetings ago, if you weren't here when I turned my chair, the whole thing fell over and made quite a scene. So the engineering of the law department came up with this solution and the service department implemented it. So my hat's off to the service department. And some of you may have a few of them over on your side. Uh, I see one over there by <laughs> Councilwoman Heeman, maybe Councilman Pat, uh, Pat Kelly down there. He's got one too. Uh, but uh, anyways, job well done. So thank you, Madam President. Uh, that concludes my report. Thank you. Finance Director Kopfer, do you have a report this evening? Um, yes, I do, Madam President. Um, Last week, the Auditor of State, uh, Keith Faber, was uh, here to give the city the Auditor of State Award with distinction um, because our local government was one of a small percentage 
that uh, received this award. Uh, it's there's several requirements. Um, obviously, the file the financial reports in a timely manner. Um, we prepare a comprehensive annual financial report, which is the more detailed report rather than just the general purpose. Um, there are no findings for recovery, material citations, weaknesses, significant deficiencies, or findings and questionable costs. Um, the entity's management letter contains no comments that relate to ethical referrals, questionable question costs, um, lack of timely report submission, bank reconciliation issues, failure to obtain a timely single audit in accordance with the uniform guidance, findings for recovery of less than 500, and that we have um, met um, their threshold of public meetings or public records issues where they, they um, did this test and set up this uh, reporting process for that through the auditor state. Um, there's over 6,000 state and local governments and less than 5% of them get uh, this award. And so we should be proud of the city of North Olmsted and um, Mayor Kennedy was there along with um, Keith Sperling who is the assistant finance director and he does, he, he manages the audit process and does a great job at it. And we wouldn't be here without his assistance. So thank you very much and that concludes my report. Thank you. Moving into council committee reports, the committee of the whole met on Tuesday, August 10th from 6.30 until 7, 10 p.m. Present were council members Brassard, Williamson, Heeman, Limpert, Glassburn, and Kelly. The mayor, law director, finance director, human resources director, planning and development director, and the city's IT network administrator. Council met to ask additional questions of the administration regarding the server shutdown the city experienced at the end of June through mid-July. Council was hopeful to see cybersecurity training set for employees and for the city server to be moved swiftly to the cloud. And that concludes my report. Councilman Brassard, Chairman of the Public Safety, Health and Welfare Committee, do you have a report this evening? I do, Madam President. Thank you. The uh, Public Safety, Health, and Welfare Committee met this evening at 720, beginning at 7.20 p.m. Present were uh, all of council, including committee members Brossard, Williamson, and Limpert, Council President Jones, uh, the mayor, law director, and guests. Uh, we met to discuss a new liquor permit application, number 032-070-30440. This would be issued to Bob Evans Restaurants, LLC, doing business as Bob Evans Restaurant Number 120, located at 25853 Lorraine Road, North Olmsted, Ohio, 44070. Uh, there was no objection from the police department. Uh, I made a motion to uh, not object to all of council. It was seconded by Councilwoman Williamson, voted on uh, and approved by a uh, vote of three to zero. Uh, so at this time, I will uh, move to not object to all of council. Uh, liquor permit number 03207030440. Bob Evans Restaurants LLC doing business as Bob Evans Restaurant number 120, located at 25853 Lorraine Road, North Olmsted, Ohio 44070. And I'll ask for a second. Second. Motion to not object to liquor permit number 03207030440 made by Councilman Brassard, seconded by Councilwoman Williamson. Roll call, please. Mr. Brassard? Yes. Ms. Williamson? Yes. Mr. Limpert? Yes. Ms. Heeman? Yes. Mr. Schumann? Yes. Mr. Glassburn? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. That motion passes with a vote of 7 to 0. Uh, thank you, Madam President. The meeting concluded at 7.21 p.m., and that will conclude my report. Thank you. Councilwoman Williamson, Chairwoman of the Building, Zoning, and Development Committee, do you have a report this evening? I do not have a report this evening, Madam President. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Schumann, Chairman of the Finance Committee, do you have a report this evening? Uh, I do. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, Finance Committee met uh, this evening, 8 21 at 7.30. Um, uh, committee members Schumann, Broussard, and Kelly were all present along with all of council, mayor, law director, finance director, 
planning and development director, HR director, and guests. Um, we discussed 2021-46, which is a resolution authorizing the Director of Human Resources to solicit proposals for excess insurance coverage for the city health care and hospitalization plans for 2022, and further authorizing the mayor to subject to the approval of the Board of Control to enter into the contract mm. for said insurance coverage. Um, according to um, Director Gallo, resolution 2021-46 allows health care uh, the, a health care broker to solicit proposals for a city's health care plan and authorizes the mayor board of control to enter into agreement 2022 eliminates uh, PPO option one plan uh, plans offered for 22 yeah, two plans the uh, PPO option two HSA and HMO MedFlex which is UH um, the IRS has increased annual contribution limits for HSA plans as follows uh, for a family, uh, it's uh, $7,300 up from $7,200. Single person, $3,650 up from $3,600. Uh, Catch-up contributions for age 55 and older remain the same at $1,000. City continues continues to contribute half of the deductible under the HSA plan, $2,800 for a family, $1,400 for a single person. Annual deductibles remain the same under both plans. This was voted to recommend to full council 3-0. Uh, meeting concluded at 7.33, and that concludes my report. I would like to uh, have a moment of privilege, if I may. Yes. I just wanted to congratulate the uh, Finance Department on uh, another award. I know you've received many over the years, but um, you continue to knock them out of the park. Thank you. Thank and you. That's all. Thank you. Councilman Limpert, Chairman of the Streets and Transportation Committee, do you have a report this evening? No report this evening, Madam President, if I could have a moment of personal privilege. Um, I just want to take a moment. I was fortunate enough to attend the first annual Big Bike Bash on uh, Sunday that the Rec Center hosted at the middle school, high school complex. And I uh, want to congratulate the Rec Center on a very, uh, as well as local sponsors and the volunteers that were there on a very uh, well-run event. Um, I hope it becomes a recurring event and uh, word of mouth grows for more kids to attend. Um, I know my kids had a great time smiling and the confidence they built on doing a little obstacle course there from from the first run till the end um, was uh, was encouraging and I think it was a great event and uh, really great to see all the people who volunteered to do it so thank you thank you Councilwoman Heeman chairwoman of the environmental control committee do you have a report this evening I do thank you madam president uh, the Environmental Control Committee met on Tuesday, August 10th to discuss 2021-47, uh, a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into agreements with the City of Cleveland Division of Water to establish, to establish a municipal utilities district to restate the water services agreement and to provide for the transfer of water utility assets from the City of North Olmsted. The meeting was called to order at 7.09 p.m. Present were committee members Heman, Glassburn, and Williamson, Council Members Broussard, Kelly, and Limpert, Council President Jones, the Mayor, Law Director, Finance Director, Planning Director, and guests. Chairwoman Heman outlined the subject matter of the th three con contracts and discussed the history of the previous resolutions regarding these same contracts. It, would dis it was discussed that there were no substantive changes to any of the documents or to the proposal itself except for updates to the references to the year from 2018 to 2021 and also in a few select spots that discussed rates and costs. After much discussion, the mayor requested that resolution 2021-47 be held in committee, providing him time to obtain a date when representatives from Cleveland Water could be present. Chairwoman Heeman made a motion to hold 2021-47 in committee, seconded by Chair Vice Chair Glassburn. The motion passed with a vote of three to zero. Uh, the Environmental Control Committee met again this evening, uh, August 17th, to discuss again 2021-47. The meeting was called to order at 7.25 p.m. Present were committee members Heeman, Glassburn, and Williamson. Council members Broussard, Kelly, Limpert, and Schumann. Uh, Council President Jones, the Mayor, the Law Director, 
the finance director, the human resource director, and the planning director. The purpose of uh, discussing 2021-47 was to uh, clarify whether or not the mayor had made an appointment for Cleveland Water to uh, schedule with us for a committee meeting. Uh, and he reported that he has reached out to them but has not heard back. Uh, and we will be keeping that in the committee pending uh, further information as to the attendance of Cleveland Water. Chairwoman Heeman made a motion to hold 2021-47 pending the mayor scheduling Cleveland Water, seconded by Councilman Glassburn. Motion passed 3-0. to zero. The meeting concluded at 7.30 p.m. And thank you, Madam President. That concludes my report. Thank you. Councilman Glassburn, Chairman of the <clears throat> Intergovernmental Relations Committee, do you have a report this evening? Uh, no, Madam President. I do not have a report. Thank you. Councilman Kelly, Chairman of the Recreation, Public Parks, and Buildings Committee, do have a report this evening. No report, Madam President, but I'd like a moment of personal privilege. Yes. Thank you. So at the last council meeting, there had been an issue with parking on West 231st <coughs> Street. And uh, I would like to give a shout out to Chief Wagner from the police department who looked through the ordinances and we realized that the people were parking okay the way it was. The two citations that had been written that that were uh, not a left side to curb uh, were either voided or the money returned to one who had paid it. So everyone is aware of what the parking ordinance is down there now on 231. Everybody seems to be happy. And the chief also put a couple of the speed monitoring signs down there for a week. And I appreciate that also. So. I want to thank the administration for that. Thank you. Are there any letters or communications to come before council at this time? No, Madam President. Thank you. Thank you for joining us at our council meeting this evening. If there is anyone in the audience that would like to address council, please approach the podium. Please state your full name and address for our clerk. If you live in a city other than North Olmsted, please state the name of that city and proceed with your comments. You have up to five minutes to address council. <clears throat> Good evening. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeff Sturgeon, 3092 West 231. Uh, I would like to thank Councilman Kelly for speaking with uh, the police chief and at least for right now, maybe temporary allowing pro uh, the parking on our street again although it does kind of I think that maybe the last meeting I did mention maybe that sh there should be some discussion on this I still feel there should be regarding uh, the parking on that street and maybe other streets um, I was not aware and I don't think the police officer was and I don't even know if uh, the chief was but if you read the ordinance Technically, a curb is what states of where you can legally park in North, North Olmsted. If there's a curb, it states that you're supposed to park between the sidewalk and the curb, meaning the tree lawn, and not on the street. Right now, the chief is going to allow us, correct, by pulling over a little bit, and that there was discussions in the 90, that's why the cinders were put down. So even back then, technically by our own ordinance, we're not even following our own ordinance. So maybe I think it's that ordinance was written in December of 1980. And I just think that it might be time to look at that ordinance and say, well, you don't have to be all the way off the street. And that's currently the way it's written. There are other streets, you know, 233, 232, uh, Mildred, uh, you can go down, Marion and stuff. There's no curbs. People still park on the streets nobody pulls all the way over and I think there also needs to be some discussion if, I don't know if the service director or who but uh, there are several homes on my street where people put stakes up so you cannot park in front of their homes in the tree lawn and I don't know you know do they have the okay to do that or not I just think that you know maybe they don't want to they've been there for several years okay so maybe I think that should be looked at but the ordinance thing I'd like to see stuff in writing you know uh, administrations change police keeps change people change 
the chief of police says everything's okay now, but even technically he's not following our own ordinance, why don't we get something in writing and maybe try to follow our ordinance or change that little aspect <coughs> of it. If he's gonna allow it here, you could have next month or next year, somebody on another street, same issue come up. Um, but thank you, Councilman Kelly, for uh, at least getting this going. So I don't know who would be responsible or anybody would want to even consider a talk about this or, you know, but I think we got an ordinance that was written in 1980 that's not, it, it's not a good ordinance, uh, at least a phase of it is at the last paragraph. Uh, lastly, I guess when to state my opinion, I don't think the, in my opinion, that the water agreement contract with the city at this time, I don't believe, in my opinion, is a is a good thing to do for the city right now. Uh, there's just too many unanswered questions as far as buying what the co the pipes would cost us after five years. I think everything that's one. I think everything works towards the city's or, of Cleveland's favor as far as we, if the city comes over here, they want to get some of our tax money. Another thing that bothered me is uh, Mayor Kennedy had mentioned at least once, maybe twice, uh, brought up lead pipes. Well, the lead pipes, there's no lead pipes in uh, the mains. Lead was never a pipe, a metal used for it. So they're all cast iron, the old ones, okay? The only time that lead is, is where the two joints, where the two pipes come together, they were leaded together. There are lead service lines. One more minute. Okay. Dang it. I hate when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> um, so by mentioning Flint, that has no nothing to do with us. Flint infected their own water system by leaving Detroit and using Flint River water it had nothing to do. I think that that was not a good comparison. It shouldn't even have been mentioned. You know, if you look at the facts of Flint, it had nothing to do with it. But we do have plenty of lead service lines. And the service lines are the lines from the house to the main. The water department is not responsible for those, okay? That is up for a homeowner. They always have been, and unless something changes, when those new mains do come in, if they do, the homeowner is going to have to pick up the cost to change that. If the homeowner doesn't have it, who's going to pay for that? Okay? But there are no lead water. All right. Thank you, Mr. Sturgeon. Thank you. Sorry I took up all the time again. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Alejandro Chalk, 24677 Randall Drive. I'll try not to speak into this too closely today. As a concerned resident with a background in public infrastructure, I was intrigued by last week's discussion on 2021-47. Councilwoman Heeman wants you to believe that Cleveland Water runs nothing more than a lottery program in the hopes that you'll believe that this is how government works. For educational purposes, let's explore other government programs that fund water line improvements, including Ohio's H2 Ohio Initiative, Ohio EPA's Water Supply Revolving Loan Account Program, and the federal EPA's Drinking Water Safe, uh, State Revolving Fund. What may be of interest to this council is that these programs make awards based on the competitive ranking of highest priority projects across a pool of applicants, where no applicant is guaranteed any amount of funding in any funding year. Councilwoman Heeman calls the Cleveland Water Agreement a program that makes awards based on the competitive ranking of the highest priority projects across a pool of applications a lottery because North Olmstead is not guaranteed funding, making this claim both on the record last week and in various campaign materials produced by herself and Councilman Glassburn. This, of course, fails to consider that the regulated, accountable, transparent, and fair distribution of public funds may, be, may in fact be a state or federal requirement rather than some table game being played in Columbus or Washington. Where this leaves Councilwoman Heeman is in the unenviable position of having to declare H2 Ohio, Ohio EPA, and the federal EPA as lotteries themselves, lest she be forced to concede on the record that she may have misstated how infrastructure funding actually works. For the foreseeable future, the majority of city councils determined to allow its citizens' water fees to go towards neighboring communities, while Councilman Broussard himself encourages his new neighbors to patch their water lines in perpetuity, up to and exceeding the point at which we begin patching the patches themselves. 
If the concern is simply the cost of buying back infrastructure, let's explore that as well. If we can sit here today and honestly state on the record that we will leave Cleveland Water within the next 50 years for a legitimate service or quality reason, we should leave Cleveland Water today and stop letting North Homestead taxpayers lose their money to a system we have no long-term interest in. Unfortunately, using taxpayer dollars to make up for lost opportunities is a skill set this council employs far too often. That brings us to 2021-53 to be placed on first reading tonight and concerning the construction of a pedestrian hybrid beacon at Clegg Park. Not only am I a candidate for city council, I'm also an author of the Clegg Road Corridor Safety Study referenced by this le legislation. Director Lieber can confirm that as of this spring, the tasks my firm was retained to conduct are complete and closed out, and that I have no professional or financial interest in this project or any other project related to it. Director Lieber can also confirm that our firm was never retained to design or construct any improvement as related to the Clay Road Corridor study. At this time, I stand before you as a resident of the city of North Olmsted, and I am quite concerned. The Clay Road Corridor study recommended a northbound left turn lane plus signal timing improvements at Maple Ridge Road, along with the exact same pedestrian hybrid beacon that is currently proposed in 2021-53. These recommendations were developed collaboratively through public input, input between the project team and the city of North Olmsted, and discussions with the county, Nowaka, and ODOT. The project team identified a funding strategy for both of these improvements at little to no taxpayer expense using ODOT safety funding. The administration brought this funding strategy to council in the form of resolution 2021-11 in October of 2020, which included the exact same pedestrian hybrid beacon that is proposed in tonight's ordinance 2021-53. If City Council was as committed to pedestrian safety as they claim to be tonight, they could have drafted legislation compelling the administration to pursue funding for just the pedestrian hybrid beacon, but they did not do that. Councilman Glassburn and Councilman K Kelly effectively killed 2021-11 in committee, only to now co-sponsor 2021-53, which does the exact same thing, but now at taxpayer expense. At a council committee meeting on April 13th, Councilman Glassburn indicated that the city should forego the recommendations and explore something else. At the same meeting, Councilwoman Heeman indicated that there was no support for the recommendation and that she wanted a different proposal that was tailored to council's re desires, regardless of facts or field data. The majority of this council stood in opposition to using grant funding for a pedestrian hybrid beacon, yet each of the members who were opposed, Council Members Heeman, Glasper, and Kelly, Williamson, and Broussard, are joined tonight by Council President Jones to pursue the exact same thing. 2021-53 identifies no grants or funding to pay for any percentage of this work, and even if Council can identify external funding, by rejecting previous funding for the exact same project, we have missed yet another opportunity to use new money for new projects. Rather than using this money to, solve, to study alternative sources of drinking water, developing a strategy for water line replacement, or studying the use of gray water in North Olmsted, we are forced to allocate funding for a project the city could have received money for long before it became the issue it is tonight. So I ask this council, why did you reject pursuing grant funding for the same improvement you put forward tonight at taxpayer expense? And why does city council always leave money on the table for other communities to take advantage of? Thank you. Thank you. Holding legislation in committee does not kill it. Madam President. Councilmember Sard. Thank you. Uh, just wanted to clarify for Mr. Chalk. At a recent meeting, he spelled his last name for us. My last name is pronounced Brosard, not Broussard. There is no U in there. But uh, thank you for the comments. My apologies. Madam President. Councilwoman Heeman. I have the floor, Mr. Chuck. I just want to spell my I last name, C-H-O-C-K. Councilman Limpert, is that legislation still pending in your committee? Madam President. Councilman Limpert. Uh, yes, it's been held for about four months now. But it's not dead. It is an active piece in your committee. That is correct. Thank you. Seeing no other comments from our audience, Council will now move into legislation. Legislation on second reading. Resolution 2021-46, introduced by Mayor Kennedy. A resolution authorizing the Director of Human Resources to solicit proposals for excess insurance coverage for the city health care and hospitalization plans for 2022, and further authorizing the Mayor, subject to approval of the Board of Control, to enter into a contract for said insurance coverage. Legislation on first reading. Ordinance 2021-49, okay. 
an ordinance to make and transfer appropriations for current expenses and other expenditures for the city of North Olmsted for the year ending December 31st, 2021 and declaring an emergency. Madam President, Mayor. I'd like to introduce place on first reading. Ordinance 2021-50, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to make a limited duration interim appointment from the current staffing complement to vacancies in the position of Director of Public Safety and Director of Public Service and declaring an emergency. Madam President, I'd like to introduce place on first reading. Ordinance 2021-51, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to purchase one ambulance rescue squad for the North Olmsted Fire Department through the state purchase program from Horton Emergency Vehicles for a price of $353,431 and further authorizing the mayor to execute all contract documents and declaring an emergency. Madam President, Mayor. place on first reading. Ordinance 2021-52, an ordinance authorizing the Director of Planning and Community Development to make applications to Cuyahoga County and the State of Ohio for the Ohio Water and Wastewater Infrastructure Grant Program for the South Interceptor Equalization Tank Project and declaring an emergency. Madam President, Mayor. I'd like to introduce place on first reading and request suspension of the rule requiring three readings and formal committee review. Madam President. Councilwoman Heeman. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to request suspension of the rules requiring three readings regarding 2021-52. Uh, Director Lieber addressed this in our caucus this evening, and this is a uh, State of Ohio grant program that is uh, an application is actually due quickly. Um, we will apply to the state. Uh, the county deadline, unfortunately, is tomorrow, and in order to be considered for the top 10 list and be uh, perhaps considered at a priority level, we need to make that application quickly. This also is would be in the best interest of the public health and safety, and I'd ask for a second. I'll second that. Motion to suspend the rule requiring three readings and formal committee review made by Councilwoman Heeman, seconded by Councilman Schumann. Roll call, please. Ms. Heeman? Yes. Mr. Schumann? Yes. Mr. Broussard? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Glassburn? I'll abstain. Mr. Limbert? Yes. Ms. Williamson? Yes. The motion passes with a vote of six to zero. If there is anyone in the audience that would like to address council regarding ordinance 2021-52, please approach the podium. Seeing none, Madam President, I'd like, I'd like to make a motion to adopt 2021-52 and ask for a second. I'll second that. Motion to adopt ordinance 2021-52 made by Councilwoman Heeman, seconded by Councilman Schumann. Roll call, please. Ms. Heeman? Yes. Mr. Schumann? Yes. Ms. Williamson? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Limpert? Yes. Mr. Broussard? Yes. Mr. Glassburn? Abstain. Ordinance 2021-52 is adopted with a vote of six to zero. Ordinance 2021-53. An ordinance authorizing the Director of Planning and Community Development to request proposals from qualified engineering firms for engineering services for the installation of a pedestrian hybrid beacon for the Clegg Park Crosswalk Signalization Project and further authorizing the Mayor, subject to approval of the Board of Control, to enter into an agreement with the engineer selected in the RFP process and declaring an emergency. On behalf of myself and Council Members Brassard, Williamson, Heeman, Glassburn, and Kelly, we introduce and place on first reading. Ordinance 2021-54, an ordinance authorizing the Director of Planning and Community Development to submit a nomination application for water pollution control loan funds through the Ohio EPA's Division of Environmental and Financial Assistance, DEFA, for design and construction of the South Interceptor Equalization Tank Project and declaring an emergency. Madam President, Mayor. I'd like to introduce place on first reading and request suspension of the rule requiring three readings and formal committee review. Madam President. Councilwoman Heeman. Thank you. I'd like to request suspension of the rules requiring three readings of Ordinance 2021-54. This is with regard to our South Interceptor Project, which is very important to all of us. Uh, it is a construction loan uh, piece of leg uh, legislation uh, regarding the Ohio EPA, and it is a 20-year loan at 0.46%, which is less than half our normal current borrowing rate. The deadline for that is September 3rd, uh, and I believe also, ma'am, that that would be in the best interest of the public health, welfare, and safety of our residents, and ask for a second. Second. 
Motion to suspend the rule requiring three readings and formal committee review made by Councilwoman Heeman, seconded by Councilwoman Williamson. Roll call, please. Ms. Heeman? Yes. Ms. Williamson? Yes. Mr. Glassburn? Abstain. Mr. Broussard? Yes. Mr. Limpert? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Schumann? Yes. Motion passes with a vote of six to zero. If there's anyone in the audience that would like to address council regarding ordinance 2021-54, please approach the podium. Madam President. I'm sorry, Director. Um, I just wanted to clarify the current rate of the DEFA loans are 0.46%, but the rate is you get is when they adjust them like maybe monthly or quarterly depending on the market so it it could be a different rate than that but that's what it is at currently thank you which is significantly lower it's a yeah. significant savings thank you madam president seeing none i'd like to make a motion please to adopt 2021-54 and ask for a second second Motion to adopt Ordinance 2021-54 made by Councilwoman Heeman, seconded by Councilwoman Williamson. Roll call, please. Ms. Heeman? Yes. Ms. Williamson? Yes. Mr. Limpert? Yes. Mr. Schumann? Yes. Mr. Glassburn? Abstain. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Broussard? Yes. Ordinance 2021-54 is adopted with a vote of 6 to 0. Moving into scheduling council committee meetings for next Tuesday, August 24th. Council Member Sard. Thank you, Madam President. We'll, uh, we'll hold a public safety health and welfare committee meeting beginning at 6.45 p.m. to discuss ordinance 2021-51, and I'll ask that the mayor or his designee be present. Thank you. Councilman Schumann. I would call a uh, finance committee meeting for 7 o'clock on the 24th uh, to discuss uh, 2021-49, 2021-50, and ask the finance director and the mayor or his designee to be there. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Limpert. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to schedule a streets and trans I'd like to schedule a streets and transportation committee meeting uh, at 7.30 on uh, Tuesday the 24th. Uh, to address 2021-53, I'd ask the uh, Director of Planning to be available. Thank you. Is there a motion on the floor to use Robert Dykes of Triad Research to redraw the ward lines in North Olmstead? So moved. Second. Motion to use Robert Dykes of Triad Research to redraw the ward lines of North Olmstead made by Councilwoman Williamson, seconded by Councilwoman Heeman. Roll call, please. Ms. Williamson? Yes. Ms. Heeman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Limpert? Yes. Mr. Glassburn? No. Mr. Broussard? Yes. Mr. Schumann? Yes. That motion passes with a vote of six to one. With the agenda being completed and there being no further business to come before council, this meeting of August 17th, 2021 is adjourned at 8.38 p.m.